This is concept one of our genetics unit, and we're going to be talking about the structure of DNA as well as RNA and also DNA replication. So first, let's have a little refresher on nucleic acids because it's been a few units since we talked about macromolecules. Remember that nucleic acids are a macromolecule that carry our genetic material. So they're, they're carrying our DNA and they contain genes, and genes are the blueprint or the instructions for making proteins. And genes are located at certain points on a chromosome or in a chromosome. Proteins are really important because they carry out all cellular activity. So DNA is very important because it has the instructions for making these proteins that are going to go on and basically run our cells. There are two types of nucleic acids. DNA, which stands for deoxyribonucleic acid, and RNA, which stands for ribonucleic acid. DNA and RNA have different sugars in them. DNA has deoxyribose and RNA has ribose. So they kind of get their name after what sugar it is that makes them up. Now, if you remember correctly, that nucleic acids are made of nucleotides. So nucleotides are the monomer, nucleic acids are the polymer. And nucleotides have three parts. They have sugar, um, which is either deoxyribose in DNA or ribose in RNA. So this blue piece is the sugar. They have a phosphate, um, which is this red piece right here. And then they have a nitrogen base. And there's five different nitrogen bases, which are all kind of different shapes, which is why I kind of just put a rectangle here. Um, but one of the, there's adenine, guanine, cytosine, thymine, and uracil. Adenine, guanine, and cytosine, A, G, and C, those are all in RNA and DNA. Thymine is only in DNA and uracil is only in RNA. So those are two of the ways that we can determine looking at something if it's DNA or RNA. All right, we're going to talk about the structure of DNA. So this kind of shows it more three-dimensionally, and this one's going to show it just kind of flat in 2D. But basically, DNA structure can be subbed up summed up in two words, and that's double helix. Um, DNA structure is really, it looks like a ladder that's been twisted. So you see when it's untwisted, it's flat, it looks like a ladder, but it's really, it's all twisted up. It has a sugar and phosphate backbone. So what you'll see is like on the sides of the ladder, you could say it's alternating phosphate sugar, phosphate sugar, phosphate sugar. And that's why we say it's a sugar phosphate backbone. That would be this purple part in this molecule. So we see right there. Um, the nitrogen bases, sorry, the nitrogen bases that are right here, like this yellow and blue and this green and red, they are kind of like the rungs of the ladder, these base pairs. And they're held together by weak hydrogen bonds. This bond right here in between these are weak hydrogen bonds. All the other bonds in this structure are strong covalent bonds. So these bonds like right here and right here, those are strong covalents. They're not going to break very easily. All right, let's talk more about those base pairs. Nitrogen bases bond only to their complementary base pair with hydrogen bonds. They always bond the same thing. A's always bond with T's and C's always bond with G's. And you can see that when you look at this um, structure. So these are the complementary base pairing rules. And specifically, these are the DNA complementary base pairing rules. So anywhere you see a T, you should see an A. Anywhere you see a C, you should see a G. All right, RNA structure is a little bit different. It is only a single strand of nucleotides. And you can see the bases are kind of exposed. There's not that other side to it, so they're just kind of open. RNA bases bind um, or match up with DNA bases. And we'll see kind of how that happens um, when we learn how RNA is formed. But in RNA, A's bind with U's because there's no T's in RNA. And C is still bind with G's. So that's the one difference right there. All right, so I want you to try this for a second in your notes. I want you to pause and try to fill this in based on what you just learned. I'll go ahead and go through the answers. DNA is made of A, T, C, and G. RNA is A, U, C, and G. The sugar in DNA is deoxyribose, and the sugar in RNA is ribose. The shape of DNA is a double helix, and the shape of RNA is a single strand. All right, let's talk through the basics of heredity. The basics of heredity. So, we kind of talked through this a little bit with mitosis and meiosis, but we're going to emphasize this again. Chromosomes and genes, what they are. 
chromosomes are tightly coiled strands of DNA. So if you take your DNA and you really tightly coil it up, you're going to get a chromosome. Different organisms have different numbers of chromosomes. So humans, we have 23 pairs of chromosomes, 46 total. So all of our DNA, all of our genetic material is coiled up into 46 chromosomes. 23 of those chromosomes came from mom and then 23 came from dad. So that's why we say there's 23 pairs or 46 total. Dogs, though, for instance, have 37 pairs. So they have 74 total. So there's different numbers depending on the organism, but the only number you need to remember are the human numbers. Genes are pieces of DNA or sections of a chromosome that have instructions to code for one protein. One chromosome, y'all, one of these 46 chromosomes in a human can contain thousands of genes linked together on it. So you have a lot of genes. So to summarize that, genes are pieces or sections of DNA. Chromosomes are long strands um, of DNA all kind of bunched up. I think this picture does a great job kind of showing it. So right here we have, the, um, we have you know, nitrogen-based pairs and we have the double helix. But as you can see, it gets coiled up. And they actually get coiled up around these his, things called histones or histones. And that's what kind of coils up tighter and tighter and tighter into a chromosome. And you can see the chromosomes in the cell. Um, this is a duplicated chromosome. This would be after the S phase of interface, since it looks like an X. It's got the sister chromatids. Um, but that kind of shows you where all of this sort of pieces together. And that's important because now we're going to talk about DNA replication. So how we get these two sister chromatids that are identical in the S phase of interface. So here's some background. We remember from learning mitosis, um, mitosis, and we will learn meiosis, that when a cell is ready to divide, it first must copy its DNA. And the process of making an identical copy of DNA is called DNA replication. So this is happening during the S phase, synthesis of the cell cycle, which is during interphase. Basically, this ensures that each new cell is going to have the exact same DNA um, as the original cell. So the daughter cells have the same DNA. All right, so you can see from this picture, it's a pretty complicated process. But for your class, we're going to kind of simplify it down. First, the DNA gets unzipped. Um, next, some enzymes help find complementary base pairs, and they bind them according to their base pairing rules. So they find A's to go with T's and C's to go with G's and vice versa. And then at the end, two identical DNA molecules are formed. Each is with like an old strand and each a new strand. So we use like the old is kind of talking about the template, that original strand, and the new is the new base pairs that were brought in. So that's why we say that DNA is semi-conservative replication or a semi-conservative model because part of the molecule originally is conserved or saved in the end result. All right, and that's DNA structure.